On today's Dare to Compare Tour, we're going to show you some of the toughest testing procedures in the HVAC industry that are employed to provide you with the highest quality level possible. And we're going to show you literally how to destroy some of the best HVAC products. Let's get on with the tour. Quality testing is just one part of the job at this facility. Designing products to make certain that they provide quality performance is a goal too. To further explain, I'd like to introduce Brandon Bates, Manager of Design, Engineering and Testing. Brandon, how are you? Good, how are you, Mark? Real good. What can you tell us about what you do here? Well, what I do is I run the day-to-day -day operations for design engineering. Well, hey, great. What can you show me here today? Okay, Mark, in this area are where the, we locate the performance chambers. There are six environmental chambers in this lab. What we want to do is measure performance and efficiency under a wide range of operating conditions. Well, Brandon, this looks a lot different than my unit at home. What, what are all these extra things on it here? Well, these are stainless steel sampler trees positioned around the inlet side of the condenser coil. And these are for measuring the inlet air, dry bulb, and wet bulb temperatures entering this particular heat exchanger. In this lab, we need to operate this product under a wide range of operating conditions so that we can measure capacities, efficiencies, SEER ratings, HSPF ratings. So in this room then, do you, you literally take the temperature to different extremes then, right? When That's you're doing correct. this testing? It's high as 135 degrees wow. and well below zero. Well, great, thanks for the info. Let's head on to the next stop. All right, Brandon, well, it's very, very quiet in here, which is unusual. So why don't you tell me a little bit about where we're at right now? Well, this is one of our sound and vibration labs for Goodman. What we want to do is basically measure sound power, sound pressure, and vibration. So you've got a box here set up. What is this for? Okay, this grid is set up as a reference distance away from the unit. What they have to do is physically take a microphone and measure multiple quadrants on each side of the unit as well as the top. This will give you a quantitative measurement of sound and it will be tested in the same manner no matter who the manufacturer is. How do you determine what's too loud and um, you know, what may be acceptable? Well, obviously, at the beginning of the process, we have a marketing spec that says what absolute value you would want to publish at, okay, and it needs to fall within that. But in sound, it doesn't tell you the entire story. We have a sound jury process where a group of individuals that work for the Goodman family will physically come in and listen to each one of these products prior to releasing a new product design. So what we want to do is take people from different backgrounds, from marketing, from engineering, manufacturing, purchasing, and have them go through a sound jury process where they will physically grade each one of our products under different categories. Hey Brandon, thanks for talking to us today. Thank you. Well, it looks like things are going great here at Design, Engineering, and Testing. Let's head over to the Quality Reliability Lab. Steve Griffin is the Vice President of Quality here. Hi Steve, how are you? Hi Mark, how are you? Real good, good to see good. you. Good, welcome to Reliability. Well thank you very much. Now I believe uh, you're in charge of making certain that the products meet the highest possible quality standards and that the tests devised to test those products are the most rigorous in the industry. Is that an accurate description? Yes, that's exactly what we do here in Reliability. What we do here is we take the designs that come from engineering and we test them at the extremes of the operating envelope. For example, we might test a product at a much lower voltage than what you might expect to see in the field, or a much higher voltage. We might introduce moisture into a system. We'll introduce dirt into a system. We'll block the systems off so that some of the airflow is blocked. We'll just try and stress the equipment and run it uh, at uh, a very high cycle rate to age it very quickly. So you'll literally take things and go to the extremes of what they might meet in the real world you're making sure that it can handle it and not break down. It's all about making sure that we exercise it here so that we know that when a dealer gets it in the field and a homeowner gets it, that it's going to operate under whatever conditions it's going to see. It's even critical for us to, to know that non-operating environments, for example, when we ship a product across the country, right. if we ship it through North Dakota, 
maybe it's minus 40 in the, in the rail car. If we ship it through Arizona, maybe it's 150. We work very closely with our suppliers on component reliability. In reliability, you'll do two types of tests. One that's designed to kill the component, so you figure out what its weakest link is, right. or one that's designed to age it rapidly to see what the failure rates might be as the product ages. So you guys are really sort of the test pilots of the HVAC industry. Yeah, we sure are. I haven't thought about it that way, but uh, we'll all strap our helmets on and go for it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, I'd love to see some of this. Well, why don't we head out and take a look at the salt fog chamber? Sounds good. So Mark, this is the salt fog chamber. Okay. It's a way of really driving a corrosion reaction. Well, let me show you. Uh, and again, don't worry about the fumes. Sure. It's just a, just a salt fog. And what you'll see here is it's starting to develop some corrosion sure, here. Right in here, it looks yeah. like you can see some. And on some. the back side, we're starting to see a little bit of things. But in essence, what we're looking for is how good is the conformal coating on the board? How well are the components standing up? Are we getting ingress of uh, like uh, the salt fog in under the relays? Those types of things. And every day we'll take this component out, we'll rinse it with deionized water, okay. we'll dry it, and we'll put it back in a unit and make sure it's operating. And that's awesome. the way we do the, the test with this. Would you like to see our large corrosion chamber? Oh, I absolutely would. Well, it's over this way. Let's take a look. So Mark, this is our uh, large corrosion chamber. Right. In here, we can pretty well duplicate whatever environment that we're trying to qualify a product for. So you can literally test, you know, full AC units in here, correct? If you need yep. to. Yeah, we can actually run them while we're testing them. And you, as you can see, we've got various components in here. And as it clears a little bit, you'll see some in the background here, testing various types of coil coatings, testing aluminum coils, those types of things. So should I, should I stop breathing this stuff now? <laughs> yeah, you probably no. should. Okay. <laughs> All right, Steve, you're gonna have to forgive me for this. I know you probably get this all the time on the tours and it's really cliche, but is this like a giant vibrating bed machine that you'd see in a cheap motel? <laughs> Actually, it's a, it's a lot more severe than that, Mark. What we're doing back here on this repetitive shock table is we're simulating stress during transportation. If you think of my arm like the bed of a tractor trailer, and let's say the front wheels are here, the back wheels are here, sure. back behind the back wheels, that as it's going down the road, the trailer's doing this. The vibration here might be very minimal, but in cantilevered off the back wheels, the back of the bed is going up and down like crazy. And that's what we're trying to duplicate here. So you're even looking at testing to make sure that, you know, when you ship something off, that it's gonna make it to the location in one piece. Oh yeah, the customer can be just as disappointed if we make a really good product, but it doesn't arrive in good condition. Well, do you do any other tests like this? Oh, we sure do. Let me show you. Great. Okay, so from the looks of the boxes behind us, this is another shipping test. Why don't you tell us what this one finds out for us? Okay, well back behind me, Mark, is our incline impact test. Andreas, would you give us a demo? And what you'll actually see is an impact at about four miles an hour. Oh, wow, that's pretty hard. Right, that's people's reactions when they see this test. Well, hey, you know, you talked a little bit earlier about uh, failure analysis. Can, can you show me something there? Oh, yeah, sure. Why don't we head this way? Mark, so what we've got going on here is uh, motor testing. This is a state-of-the-art dynamometer. On this machine, we can test motors from a 30th of a horsepower right up to two horsepower. Well, you know, Steve, this is the quietest testing machine <laughs> I think I've seen all day. I mean, are you sure it's actually working? Oh, it's working, and it's working hard. Okay. <laughs> you know, we've been inside here all day looking at where you do all of the testing. It's all indoors. Do you ever test any of your stuff outside? Well, we certainly do. We've got a farm of units up on the roof of this building, and perhaps that's the next thing I should show you. Sounds great. So, Mark, out here you see one of our reliability test farms. Sure. What you're looking at here are a bunch of condensing units, and we'll actually... Uh, for those who are observant, these are installed too close together. But right, we've they're done really that, packed in here. Yeah, we've done that purposefully so that we can again stress the equipment. Now again, some of this product will be operating maybe with dirt that's been injected into it. It'll be operating with water that's been injected. Those types of stresses so that we can make sure that if and when the equipment sees that type of environment in the field, we know it's going to stand up over time. I can't overemphasize the commitment that we have to making sure that the product is going to last and last and last. Well, Steve, I got to tell you, this has been very impressive. Thank you very much. 
Well, I sure appreciate the opportunity to have shown it to you. Um, come back anytime. Appreciate it. Thanks. I'll tell you, this company really believes in testing and maintaining strict quality standards. Not only is the product tested thoroughly during manufacture, but the individual components, the raw materials, and even the packaging are tested thoroughly to maintain those strict standards. And you're going to see a few more tests when you come and take a Dare to Compare tour in person.